The last of our quicks uh, is um, an interesting one from uh, an article from the IFS, and it's a little bit of a uh, a call to action from us as well. Uh, the IFS have said that the UK uh, um, has a looming pension crisis, um, according to this report. And um, I just sort of wanted to quickly break it down for you and maybe give you some some bits and pieces to, to look at at the weekend. But um, they said that auto enrollment, Steve, has been a really big success. Um, so despite increased participation, auto enrollment has actually significantly boosted the number of people serving into workplace pensions, as you'd expect. And default contribution rates have gradually increased, which has encouraged higher savings amounts. Um, they said that they, we still have inadequate contributions most people are just not saving enough and this is due to low contributions or early withdrawals and there is obviously the rising cost of living which just isn't getting factored into things the increasing cost of living is just making it difficult to people to for, to save for the retirement but also making the bill at the end a lot bigger uh, they reckon about 30 to 40 percent of the private sector employees are not on track to meet the retirement goal and there is this big risk of financial hardship the, the shortfall could lead to financial difficulties in retirement and relying on the state pension or other forms of financial assistance just to get by um, one of the key findings in this report um, was that uh, private pension participation rates among self-employed has fallen really really dramatically in recent years um, the private pension participation rate was 33% in 2005, and it's now only 14%. And that obviously compares to a much higher participant rate uh, among private sector employees. So I would just say to everybody this weekend, get your calculator out and run some maths over your pension. Uh, make sure you're in the right funds. Are you still in the default fund? Could you find a better one? Could you contribute more? Does your employer offer you a higher match and you're not taking it? Could you consolidate your pensions into a single low-cost fund and save yourself on some fees whilst getting similar performance? And for those not in a workplace pension, I would say remember that your employer's contribution is part of your remuneration package, so i.e. the pay for the work that you do. And if you don't claim it, you're actually working for less than the colleagues that are in the same role as you. So um, hopefully you just have a look at these, explore them this weekend uh, if you if you haven't already. Steve? What a fun way to spend a weekend. But you're right. Um, it does seem like uh, worrying signs coming out of workplace pension um, data is, I guess, I, the way I'd put it. I mean, I'm struck by a couple of thoughts there. You mentioned kind of rising costs of living, people not saving enough and early withdrawals. It sounds to me like people raiding through their emergency funds, um, in essence, which is... Um, <laughs> Strictly, we might think your emergency fund ought to be kept separate to your pension, and it might be. But look, if, if you're in an emergency, you go for the fund that you don't want to use in normal times, and that may well be your pension uh, in a lot of cases. So I worry about what that says about the state of the economy. In terms of the state pension, I think one of the first things we said on this show when there was sort of four of us um, you know, way back then was that none of us is particularly optimistic about the outlook for the state pension. Um, I... I'm not sure quite the main thing holding it together to me looks like politics uh, rather than uh, economic sense of no one wants to be the person who um, starts to do something to the state pension that everyone kind of, uh, it looks like is going to come to rely on uh, in the future. So my reason for thinking it might be okay isn't a particularly good one. It's that I don't think anyone will dare to try and change it. That's quite risky though so um yeah my own workplace pension isn't great actually and that's part of my reason for um well being here and thinking about this kind of thing to try and work out how to do a better job when retirement comes around whenever that is if it is yeah i think that's that's quite important um point there steve i think um my workplace pension, I think, has been a sort of burner contention for me as well for for quite a while, and I've been in and out of it while I transfer it to uh to my SIP from 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 point to point because my SIP is lower cost and um and better performance. But I think the key point there is the part on on remuneration. So if you if you are out of your workplace pension, you are missing uh, potentially whatever your employer offers as a match out of your salary. So it's like you working at a discount. Um, so I think it's probably worth being in a pension just for that match, just to get that match, if that's the, you know, the least you can do. So there, there's some really interesting data in there, though, that saying that the, the the interesting bit that I picked out was that in the past, people used to get to 50s and the mortgages have done and the children had uh, long since moved out. And they're obviously their then disposable income was was up because they were being paid a lot and pensions used to grow at a rapid rate but because house prices are so expensive now and kids can't afford to move out 
and you know they're, they're staying for longer and we're having children longer we're also missing on that sort of 50 to 65 power hour where we get loads and loads of money into our pension and and, and actually make it out into a, a reasonable amount um and the last bit i'll just add steve before we uh, before i pass back to you or we move on is just remember the state pension is there to be and the end if you do get it it's there to give you a very basic standard of living it's not supposed to be the lap of luxury and um, you know, if you if you think you're going to go out to Max and Spencer's and buy sourdough bread and and uh, you know and a nice bottle of red, uh, you're you, you're going to be mistaken. It is quite literally there to just give you just about enough money to keep you alive and m- maybe not even heat your house. So um, yeah, uh, apologies for the, the the you know being a bit morbid, but it, it is definitely something that I think people should just just take an hour out of your day out to to think about on Sunday. Yeah, when you're taking that hour out, I think the thing that I always struggle to remember to pay attention to when I think about retirement calculations and projections and forecasting and what I might need and what might get me where and so on is I always just, at first anyway, I always forget to factor in inflation, basically. So I look at numbers and think, yeah, I could live on that. I could live on that. I could live on that. Um, Better on this number than this number and so on. So how long do I want to work for? Try and keep in mind if you can. Um some sort of fairly conservative assumption about inflation which is going to make things go backwards you mentioned it in the context of housing there Steve you mentioned it before in the context of cost of living I think over time and that's only going one way um, inflation might be coming down prices are still going up they're just going up less quickly than they were before and if you want to take a guess at how fast they're going to go up between now and your retirement date or or well actually to the point that you um, are going to stop spending money at all because if you retire, then you've still got prices going up. You're just not adding anything to your um, pension fund anymore. So that's uh, that's the bit that I always struggle to remember. And if anyone's getting the calculator out, try and factor that in if you can. You've been watching a segment from the Playing FTSE show brought to you in association with our favourite broker, Trading212. For the full version of the show, check us out on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. And if you check us out on the link in the description, there's a free share in it for you with Trading212 if you open a new account. Just use the code FTSE so they know we sent you.